thank you for uh, anurag invited me to this and um, i'm very very happy to be here um, some of you may know a little bit about my background i'll give you a little bit of context of my background in 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 the context of what i was about to speak about but i thought you guys are obviously extremely successful qualified professionals that's why you're here top 40 under 40 etc so i decided to talk a little bit for the next 10 minutes on a little bit of a personal journey and hopefully that can inspire some provocative thoughts about your own life so i won't talk much about business you guys are experts in that i'll talk a little bit about how i made some strong personal decisions that were very useful for me and i thought uh, i'd share some frameworks that could be useful for you as well so uh when i thought about this event i kind of reflected back about 10 12 years ago i was uh, when i was about 28 years old i had got my first 40 under 40 in the us with advertising age i was with procter and gamble in the us i was doing quite well and i thought my life would end up becoming a little bit like the chart on the left i was doing very well at my career i thought i would keep doing well at my career and you know become a ceo and do you know like uh, great business things but a uh, different kind of pattern started to happen with my life and um, uh, when i was uh, in 2008 when i was like tw 28 29 years old 40 and 40 at that point of time i had this sudden kind of urge that uh, my life was feeling very predictable i thought i would live the exact life that i was living now is what i would be living in the for the next 15 20 years and uh, something felt that that wasn't quite right and that quite, wasn't quite my destiny so I, when i was 29 years old i left my job in the us and uh, decided to backpack for a year um, travel in south america mongolia central asia etc and write a novel so it was a very random decision i was 29 my family was saying you obviously get married uh, when i told my boss at png that i was leaving to do this he said look procter and gamble is actually a one way door if you leave uh, you'll never be able to get back and uh, i was very worried ki kya hoga future ka but something told me ki that that was the right decision for me so i went ahead i did this year of backpacking writing novel etc came back and i actually lived the worst case scenario so there was no glorious return in which i came back and was like you know i'm enlightened now and things have gotten great when i came back after that year there was uh, lehman brothers had just collapsed so i had come back in october 2008 if i'm not wrong and that was the time lehman brothers had collapsed and there was no job to be had at all and so i spent a few months like i was in pretty bad shape i looked for a job eventually found a job with the boston consulting group and joined the job again and then again because i had kind of grown a lot during this trip i started to do very well with my career again at that point of time i thought ki look i took such a big risk and it was a disaster i'm never going to take a risk again i spent 3 uh, 4 years doing very well at my career again and then i had this sudden urge once again and it was like precipitated with a bunch of events my mother who was in her early 50s she had died from cancer and i was very uh, like you know very kind of uh, uh you know felt very very deeply about that i had a lot of spiritual questions in my mind and i had decided then in 2012 to take a year off to learn yoga and meditation again very random decision i was in my 30s everybody was saying look my family was saying ki i, I remember there was a dinner once um, where uh, my uh, like you know my entire family was and i think my brother in law one of my relatives said ki look i would never want my kids to grow up like you you know in your 30s just drifting not having any anchor no place you don't have a place you're leaving your job to learn yoga and meditation and what is all this stuff right and i decided to do that because something in my life was telling me ki this was the right decision for me so in 2012 i took another year off to learn yoga and meditation again came back and uh, started to do i found a job again started to do very well in my career i was the head of craft in uh, the us uh, for like a large uh, billion dollar pnl i did very well and again i thought ki look i have to stop drifting now i have to become like you know a classic corporate strong guy i'm 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 on the ceo path i should do very well but another 3 4 years later i did another novel at that point of time which had done quite well in india it was called johnny gone down um, it was being made into a movie by ronnie scruvala so it had done quite well but i felt ki look i haven't achieved creative excellence in what i'm doing i should really take a chance at becoming a full time writer in the us and uh, really uh, take a like you know really deepen my creative uh, uh, creative ideas right so i took another leap in 2015 or 16 to become a full time writer and i became a full time writer in new york for about uh, 18 months and i was i published my third novel which again didn't do too well 
and uh, after at that point of time i was married i had uh, two small kids and i said uh, after that whole novel experience happened right uh, writing experience happened i really said ki look i'm 40 years old now at what point will i take up the stable strong path that i was supposed to take up right i, I because at that point of time uh, you know all my kind of class it's from business school i graduated from iim bangalore i done quite well at iim so everybody was like you know um like very sh- stable they had houses and ca- cars and kids and you know ki- they were talking about which schools their kids were going into and i was like still you know living like a in some ways like a hippieish kind of life where you know i would take my jobs do my yoga right etc and i thought look at this point i should settle down i'm 39 years uh, 35 years old now i should finally settle down so i got a chance to be the discovery india ceo at that point of time because uh, they were looking for somebody with very strong creative expertise as well as uh, business experience and i was the rare combination who had then writing and I, i had a good business background so i became the discovery india head which was a dream job i thought look this time i'm going to become a classic media ceo i'll go from discovery to a bigger media network and uh, now i'll be you know the person who like realizes his potential as a business ex- executive he was meant to be another 3 4 years later i was like i'm not really growing you know i'm doing much more of the uh, like i'm doing more of the same work and i can see myself doing it but i'm 40 years old i really need to know tech very well in this world the, this world is going to be run by technology and i should know technology very well and i took a leap again i started white hat junior which as some of you know sold to bajus eventually for 300 million dollars and obviously was a successful exit um, lots of ups and downs since but very successful exit um the reason i wanted to share this story is that obviously you guys are extremely successful and uh, you'll um, you'll have a classic path which will be well laid out for you but if you have these very you have you know inside you when your time is up when whatever you've learned in a particular domain is the maximum you could have learned and at that point of time if your heart is urging you to take on a huge growth adventure my life has taught me that that's actually the right thing to do because when i look back at the 20 years of uh, people who graduated with me in business school in 2002 from iim bangalore we saw a very clear pattern emerge the people who were choosing growth all the time they had very similar uh, outcomes as me which was in the beginning years it was very tough for them because they would be the only ones who would take these very disruptive almost irrational chances with their life at that point of time it was very tough and they took those decisions everybody would be like ye kya kar rahe ho sab barbaad ho jayega ye kya, like where, where is your future going and all of that stuff eventually they would like take these growth experiences come back and uh, there would be a period of time when they were struggling to integrate back but they always ended up at a little bit of a higher plane than where they would have been if they had continued in their respective paths and the growth that was happening for them internally was actually being always rewarded by the world externally but over a period of time not immediately and i saw a little bit of a path emerge that there was a very strong regular career path which i think is outstanding and excellent if that's your real desire which goes in a very good linear line kind of the line i was with at when i was a 40 under 40 myself in procter and gamble i could have continued on a very linear line and then there is a bit of a learner's path the learner's path is following your instinct for where can i maximize my growth where can i maximize my learning taking big leaps of faith based on your instinct going through lots of ups and downs you know lot of crashes and pickups but eventually you'll start to see that the dots connect for the learner in a way that it doesn't connect for the regular path and they achieve extraordinary things over a over a longer period of time so for example when discovery was looking for a ceo in india they had been searching for almost 2 years to find somebody who could actually disrupt the very steady business of discovery and they couldn't find somebody who was a creative professional to take some creative bets and had business rigor and they found somebody like me who was right at the intersection of those two when i started byte junior for example uh, at that point of time indian companies were not going international early the belief was that you would perfect your model in india over 5 to 7 years then go international 
I knew from my backpacking days into when I was 28 and I'd taken my year off and I was in like Amazon uh, in Brazil and crossing the Amazon by river from Brazil to Peru, like classic backpacker who didn't know the Portuguese language or the Spanish language at all, but was getting by in the world very easily. At that point of time, I all it sunk into me that look, the world is going to be more similar than different. Print. So when I started Vita Junior, I actually launched in the US, Brazil, etc. very early because I always had this very strong conviction that the world is more similar than different. Similarly, I mean, there are multiple things around this whole thing. All the writing failures made me actually a good startup entrepreneur because uh, I had gone through. So for my third novel, for example, was rejected about 60, 61 times. And I kept like, you know, making it better and better and better so that I would eventually get published. But by the time I started a company, I was like completely unfazed by rejections because I knew that every creation journey starts with all creation journeys are at the edges of a system. They're never at the center of a system. And you'll always be rejected when you embark on a zero to one project because edges of the system, nobody knows whether it will work or not. So uh, I'd, I'd experienced that with writing, that if you write a more conventional novel, you might get published, but when you're going and writing something really zero to one, it'll be very hard because all creative journeys will be at the edges of a system. So life taught me that the one stream view, which is uh, have a singular career journey, the, the view that we were always taught in our schools and in our families led to a good outcome. But if you looked at extraordinary outcomes, they always come from this very drifting, meandering kind of path or what appears to be a drifting, meandering path. But what is actually a path of uh, choosing, following your instinct to, to choose the maximum growth that you are possible of, uh, of as an individual, connecting the dots of multiple streams and then finally uh, identifying uh, how you bring that value back to the world. So... Um, the reason I said that today is because it's a 40 under 40 event. Uh, you're all very successful. And as a result of that, uh, there'll always be a pull towards your comfort zone. And uh, the more you break out of it, you realize that your life will be much more panor panoramic and, uh, and, and actually will eventually lead to very, very good outcomes because the world will always reward the growth that's happening inside you will always be rewarded in the, wor in the world outside because it'll just show in whatever work and, uh, you do. So I'll end this very short kind of thought process with, uh, because I've just written a book, which uh, Mr. Batra has been very, very kind to, you know, promote with his uh, vast and wide network. So I thought I would leave you with a construct from a book, right? Uh, in, in books, we say when we write a novel, for example, we say that in order for a novel to be very good, right? Or a story to be very good in a movie or a novel, there is always a simple format. It's called the lock format, right? There is a lead a protagonist who has a very, very big objective. And the bigger you make that objective, the bigger the story ends up becoming because the bigger the objective, there'll be a lot of conflict in their path, right? Which is a C, C for conflict. And at the end, whether they win or lose, the story is very exciting. The climax is very exciting because they've really battled against very, very tough oppositions, right? So if you think of like movies that you know, Three Idiots, for example, very classic format, right? They have a big goal that they have to make the education system better. As a result, their conflicts are much bigger. If you take any superhero movie, you know, Batman, Superman, same format, right? Uh, they want to save the world. The lead wants to save the world, has a big objective. As a result, they kind of fight with the biggest villains. And that's why the story is very interesting. Sometimes they win, sometimes they lose, but the story is very interesting. And when I was writing these books, I realized that life is actually very similar, right? Uh, if you choose a very big story for yourself, a very big objective, you realize that there'll be a lot of conflict in your path. If you decide to start a company, write a book, you know, not get married and backpack for a year randomly or whatever. Like, you know, you'll see that the bigger your objective, there'll be more conflict in your path. And in the end, whether you win or lose, and I think you'll win, the story is always going to be a very exciting story. And that I think is the meaning of life in some way, right? To live very big stories. So with that, I'll end. Thank you uh, for allowing me this random detour from your business day to talk about things that are a little bit more personal. And I hope it provokes some thought. Thank you.